niggas talking about change, but they can't paint the picture. Because the way I pay my music, that's how I deliver. I got some niggas gripping triggers, making niggas shiver. Oops, that wasn't hezzy fake. You gon' meet the heaven gates. Satellites like Kevin Gates. Eating off a of paper plate. Oh, no, let me redo it. Let me let me add something else in there. All right, bet. <clears throat> what up? It's O'Day. Um, 19 years old. I'm a artist. And I'm from Corpus Christi, Texas. So, uh, why made you get into music? Um, ask that question again, bro. Stop the video. Redo the video. Okay, so, bet. Um, <laughs> Where should we start? Shit. Anywhere, to be honest, anywhere. Well, let's start at the beginning. When you were a kid, what kind of kid were you? Where did you grow up? Um, How did you grow up? I, I grew up in La Armada, which is Section 8 housing in Corpus. And um, that was for like, probably till I was like five. And then I moved out, moved in with my grandma. I was really everywhere, to be honest. Like, I went from Corpus to um, San Antonio back to Corpus, to Florida, back to Corpus. Uh, I went to Houston for a little bit, but I didn't go to school over there. Um, but yeah, just in and out of Corpus and shit. But I was all around town, like, honestly, like, from the south side to the north side to the west side, like, I was really everywhere, like, everywhere. That's why I really, that's why so many people know me, really. Cause like, I was always at different schools. Like, I'd be at fucking, uh, Caroline Elementary, Ella Barnes, Berlanga, fucking Cullen, Haas, Hamlin, uh, Vets, King, like, just like tied with everybody. So, like, I just knew everybody. And that's how everybody fucks with me, really. Were you like the football kid or like, like the athletic kid or were you like the fucking. High school, middle school, middle school, yeah. I started to become like the athletic kid. Just cause there really wasn't shit to do. Football was just live, like working out and shit. I always looked up to like the athletes and shit, like just just going to school and you're just like, damn. Like being a sixth grader, you can't play football. So like in seventh grade, you see seventh and eighth graders and you're just like, damn, like that shit look live. Like everybody praises them. Like I, I've always fucked with that. Like just being like praising the school, school spirit and shit like that. So started football seventh grade year and just went throughout high school and I only played football really. I tried some other sports, but they were they were they were not my they weren't my thing, bro. What age did you start uh, getting interested in making music? It was I was probably like 18, 17. Probably like, probably like 17, late 17. Um fucking I was at King and I was in the locker room. I think it was like probably like lunchtime or some shit. I walk in there, I get on my phone put on my headphones, I get on GarageBand. Me and my bro had just found out about GarageBand. And um, I look up a fucking Block Boy JB type beat. Um, put that beat in GarageBand and I'm just freestyling. I'm just punching in, like straight punching in the whole time. Um, and I made City Bop. And I had a couple people walk in and out of the locker room and they were like, what the fuck you doing? I was like, bro, I'm recording a song right now. Like, like and it, it was really unheard of at the time especially on your phone. So like for them to walk in and they're like, what the fuck you doing? Like, I was just like, I had the mic right here. Bro, I'm in the studio right now. Yeah, like nah, for real. I was telling them like, I'm in the studio, like I'm really working right now. And um, they'd just be like, damn near like trying to roast me and shit. Yeah. Like trying to like make fun of me and shit. But I finally like, I'm showing everybody in school, showing everybody in all my periods and shit. And they're like, damn, that's a good song. Like you should, you should honestly drop that. And so, I was like SoundCloud, fuck it, made a SoundCloud, dropped that hoe. Every period I went to, I was like, bro, you heard my song? You wanna listen to my song? Listen to my song. Like, like anybody, like the nerds, the emos, like the fucking thugs, the athletes, like anybody, teachers. Like I have a video of my fucking teacher playing that shit in front of my class and he was just bumping his head. I was like, damn. But that hoe ended up getting like it's probably at like 9,000 plays. It's nothing crazy, but like just for that to be the first song, mm -hmm. shit was kind of crazy. Uh, was K Santana your first name you came up with? Yeah, honestly. Why it, did you come up with that? Honestly, it was my bros. Like, <sighs> he had Jabez Santana. His middle name's Jabez. So I don't know where Santana came from, but he was Jabez Santana. 
and we had made a song together. This is my first song, and um, it's called For Real. We was in the studio with Yeshi. I don't know if anybody knows who Yeshi yeah, is, but Yeshi, Yeshi cool. Um, was recording with him, and um, he was like, all right, well, what do y'all want this song to be called? Like, every engineer asks that when they're done recording you. What, what do you want this song to be called? What do you want it to be titled? Or what's your rap name? And um, I was just like, man, K Santana, fuck it. And then my nigga Oscar was just like, he was born today. You know what I'm saying? Like, he, like the legend was made today. Like, it was a good, it was a good song. It was a solid song. Like, for it be my first. And so from there on out, I was just K Santana, and a lot of people fucked with it. They fucked with the way it sounded and shit. But um, at one point, I walked into a crib. And a bunch of niggas were just like coming up to me and they were like, K Santana, K Santana, is that K Santana? Like, trying to like boost my ego and shit. And I was just like, nah, I'm not fucking with that. The way it sounded was just gross. It didn't have a ring to it. Mm. But, um, yeah. So you changed it to O'Day and what's the meaning behind the name O'Day? I actually live like literally a street away from O'Day. And it's spelled O D A Y, O Day Parkway, and um, it like to be honest, I didn't know I lived down the street from O Day until like a couple weeks after I changed my name to O Day, and um, I was in the studio with Bad Man and uh, Saint was recording and shit, and I was like, "Do y'all fuck with K Santana? Like, does that sound good?" And they're like, "Yeah, I always fuck with it. Do you fuck with it? Like, that's what matters. Do you fuck with it?" So like, to be honest, bro, hell nah. I told him about the story and shit. And then I was like, I'm, I'm thinking about changing my shit right now. And they were like, shit, go ahead. Like, do your thing. And Batman started recording and shit. So I'm over there on my phone. Like, I did the most simplistic shit ever. I looked up what words rhymes with K. Because huh. people would call me K. You know what I'm saying? So looked up that and O'Day popped up. And I was just like, bro, that sounds live as fuck. I was like, what if I put an E on the end of it? And Batman was like, that has a ring to it, O'Day. Like, yeah, yeah. O'Day. So, changed to O'Day and made the song called O'Day. Um, I wanted O'Day to be a, a, a genre switch up from making bullshit music, just having fun music, to kind of taking it more serious mm -hmm. and, and kind of being more lyrical and more storytelling and, and just actually like a, a good artist and not just like a fuck around, like bullshit. I think that's what... It kind of separates you from most artists. Yeah. <clears throat> I think that's why m most people that I've met and who I've talked about you, they're really like you because of your lyrics. Mm. And the way you've explained things. Yeah. You have a good way of telling a story and telling people, uh, you have a good way of getting people to understand how you're feeling yeah. through music. Yeah, uh, for sure. Who's your motivations? Like, who inspired you to... Shit. To keep going, to keep living. There's honestly like so many people, bro. Like, like artist wise, probably like X for sure, top. Like, we was jamming X earlier. Like, mm -hmm. X, um, J. Cole, Drake, Kendrick. Those are like mainstream people that like I've always like just idolized. And their lyrics really stuck with me. <laughs> I'm not really like too big into like, I fuck with Tupac, I fuck with Biggie. I'm not really like I'm not the type to be like those are my my biggest role models and and all that. Um, so like influencers, I probably say Drake, Kendrick, J Cole. Um, I listen to a lot of underground music, so like Summers, Autumn, fucking Goonie, a lot of shit like that. But hell from yeah. uh, you said you also like doing uh, like you also, you also fuck with alternative yeah. music as well. So like. What kind of uh, alternative artists do you prefer to listen to? Fuck. To be honest, like, I fuck with Joji. <laughs> honestly, do I honestly fuck with Joji. Um, other than them, I fuck with Paramore. A lot of people really don't know that. I fuck with Paramore. Ain't it fun? I fuck with that song like a hoe. It makes me feel like a certain type of way. It's just the vibrations of that hoe makes me feel great. Um, <laughs> that's like a that's like a job interview question. <laughs> move on, move on. What's your long time goals like? 
you want to reach before you die? Oh, shit. I want to buy my mom a house or a car, and I want to take care of my brothers, like my, my blood brothers. I want to take care of my brothers and make sure they're straight and give them everything that they couldn't have been given or things that I couldn't have been given and have a fucking family and like, just like fucking live, like live life, not working and shit, honestly. That's that shit, that's life. Like working a nine to five or whatever the fuck, that ain't life. Like doing what you love, that shit. And having your family by you, that's fucking life, bro. I, I, that's all I want, like that's really all I want. Like, I'm about to. You get to provide. People don't even love performing. Like people don't even love being an artist. It's so damn, it's so much like, I don't know. I'd rather like own a business or something. Cause that's honestly where the bread's at. And like, we're like, you could lay back and just be making money like straight up. Don't, yeah. even, don't even have to leave the crib. People that own companies and shit. Yeah. Some of them are methods and they can keep up their habit cause they're constantly making money. Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm sorry. How the fuck did you crash on a motorcycle? Oh, bro. I didn't tell you. No, did you, I tell you? No, you, you, you didn't tell me how you did it. Um, so I was going down fucking Ennis Jocelyn. I was leaving Aspen, going down Ennis Jocelyn. I was really speeding like a hoe. I was probably going like 110. And that whole fucking street is like a fucking 40. You know what I'm saying? So going like 110, I kind of slowed down because I know that there's a turn coming up. I'm following somebody to their house to get clothes and shit. So following them, I'm, I'm, I'm speeding past them the whole time because I'm going 110. They're probably going like fucking 60. I'm speeding past them, and then I slow down, let them get in front of me. And um, they think the left coming up is their left to go to the crib. So I'm following them. They hop in the fucking opposite fucking side of the road where this car's coming towards them and shit. And I'm like, you know, fuck that shit. So I'm going like 50 at this time. Stomp on my back brakes. Fucking my bike starts like, it turns at an angle. Like, like if I'm stomping on my brakes, it's going like this type shit towards a fucking fat ass curb. I hit the fucking curb and just fly off that bitch. Like, like not like, not like I just hit it and flew on the ground, like just hit the ground, like hit it and flew. and flew off that bitch like 10 feet, smacked the fucking ground with my, landed on my head and shit, landed on my shoulder and my fucking back and started rolling. And like, when I got up, bro, it felt like, honestly, like I got hit by like a 300 pound man, like, Cause I was like, like if, if anybody plays football or like anything like that, you get hit, bro. Oh my God. Like I got up, felt dehydrated. Like the sun was like bright as fuck. I saw like purple, green and blue. And like, I honestly, my I body. Saw the stars. Yeah. Shit. Yeah. Like I just got knocked out or some shit, but I fucking picked my bike up as soon as I got up and then just took that bitch to stripes. And when I got there, I couldn't like move my arm. I was holding that bitch and it was just like, droopy and shit. Oh, yeah. Thought I broke it. Um, went to the hospital and they're like, you bruised it. Um, it should be straight in a couple weeks. And I still can't sleep on it now, but all right, reaching out kind of hurts. Fucking lucky. Nah, for real. If I hit a car or some shit, it would have definitely might have died or I might have just like fucked up my, my entire body for real. But yeah. it was fun though. It was fun. My bike's straight, so. That's good. You know what I'm saying? Drugs. Drugs. What's your drug of choice? Mm, I'm sober right now. Seven months. From we at least. Mm -hmm. I smoke nicotine. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But of choice, like if I had to choose a drug, yeah. Um, probably be acid. Not on like the daily or the regular. Yeah. But like if I recommended it or like my favorite that I've ever done, yeah. acid. It was great. It was amazing. Do you like that giggly like feeling? Honestly, for the first time, I didn't like it. Cause like when when it, when it happened, bro, I was hitting a jewel, and like the first hit was like everything was normal. You know what I'm saying? Everything's like how it is right now. The second hit, I hit it and I inhaled it and blew it out. I felt like I was floating, and like time slowed down, but like my nigga, me and my nigga was tripping. So when I was looking at him. Like, he was in normal speed, but everything around us was like, the room was in slow motion and we were just the only ones that were like locked in with each other. But it was because we were both tripping or some shit. But 
like that felt crazy. I was like, bro, is this how it feels like when you're tripping right now? Cause I feel like I'm floating. And he was like, yeah, bro, you good. Like only me and you understand how this feeling feels right now, but you're good. You're with me, you're straight. He was like, anything you need, I'm gonna take care of it. Stay in this room and just enjoy the vibes, and watch the music videos, listen to music. Whole night just listening to music and we smoked the blunt. I ate a Twinkie and I'm never, I'm never gonna, I'm never gonna eat a Twinkie again, bro. Shit was gross. I love the come down. Like that's like my favorite part, bro. Is the come down. And when you're outside on the come down, everything feels so warm. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It feels so it's like. Nice. Yeah. Cause the sun's coming up. Vibrant. Yeah. Are you religious? I am. I'm a Christian. Um, I actually got baptized probably like a couple months ago. Um, it was like my my self decision. I live like right across from a church, so I just walked over there, signed up for it. Didn't tell no family or nothing, just signed up for it. And like the day that I went to go get baptized, I told my mom and shit. And um, she she was like one of the only people that showed up. And um, yeah, I got baptized to be a Christian. Grew up in a Christian household, fucking listening to Christian radio all the time. Uh, praying before I ate, saying grace on Thanksgiving. Fucking, but yeah, I, I believe in God. I believe in Jesus. I believe in the Bible, all that shit. But um, yeah. How do you feel like your community supports you? Well, it's, it's on and off. Like, to be honest, like there'll be a song that I'll post and like I'll, I'll, I'll send it to everybody and shit. And um, it's 50-50 either. They show hella love and like they'll repost it. And they'll be like, damn, that was fire. And, and they'll show hella love in the comments and, and reposting. But um, sometimes there's them songs where it's just like, you probably only get like 10 likes and like fucking 50 views. And you know, it's, it's just 50 50. It's really like a, it's a timing thing. It's like a video. If you drop a video at fucking five in the morning, you're not going to get that much plays and shit. So, like, with, with music, you have to drop it. At a certain, wait for the right time. The right time of the day. Yeah. The right day. Like, a, it can't be a Saturday at fucking 10 when everybody's out partying and shit. It has to be, like, on a on a certain day. Like I'm not... Day, yeah, I'm not gonna give out. You know what I'm saying? Honestly, you can fucking make beautiful art, but it really just depends on if anybody really gives a fuck about your art to... Yeah. Look at yeah. For so. real. Because, I mean, there's, like... Being a SoundCloud artist or an artist in general is like so played out. It's and hard. In, in 2021, bro, like everybody's an artist. Everybody and their mom is an artist. And everybody's like, go listen to my shit. Whether it's like the best quality ever or whether it's like the shittiest like potato quality. like. And like somebody potato. told me, yeah, somebody told me though, they're like, you can make a song better than fucking Drake. You can make a song better than any song on the radio. But if you're not promoting it, if you're not marketing it, with so much money, like you, you have to spend thousands on marketing and promoting. If you're not doing that, then you're not gonna get the same amount of. Uh, yeah, you're not gonna get like known for your for your artistry. Like, it's all it's all what you do and shit. How do you take criticism? Mm. You know, I, I like listening. I like hearing the bad more than the the good because it really like helps me fix what I'm doing. Like. When I first started rapping, I had a couple people tell me like, you should rap about your pain, your struggle, what you've been through. Cause a lot of people like listening to that shit. And without a thought, just going in the studio recording all day, fucking, I just started freestyling that shit. And like, I was just like, bro, just keep punching me and I'm fucking with this. And um, when I dropped it, a lot of feedback was good. It was just like, bro, I like listening to that. You should drop more of that. You know, we, we I'm sure the people want to listen to that. And so, I mean, I take it, I take it in all different ways, but it's always, it's going, it's going to help me. It's going to make me grow. It's going, it's going to make my music. Same thing with me better. when I, uh, would post things, I would, I don't really like too much of everybody being like, yeah, bro, like I fought with it. Like, yeah. like, I mean, I guess that's a good sign, but yeah. anybody who actually like gives their criticism, it does help. Yeah, more. for sure. Bad or good. It's like, yeah. Just gotta take it as constructive criticism. And if anybody is just straight up hating, because there is a difference between criticism and hate. Yeah. If you have haters, then like that's that's honestly pretty good too. Yeah, you're doing something right. 
how did we shoot the O'Day video? Like, how did we meet and be like, hey, let's shoot a video? Like, what, what was happening? Bro, I remember that. Fucking, I saw my motorcycle, pulled up to fucking Portland. What, like, probably like 10, 30 or 11. Yeah. And like, we like, we canceled it for like a couple of days. We were like, let's shoot today. Canceled it. And then the next day we canceled it. And the next yeah. day we were just like. That's fuck shit. Yeah, nah. It was with my girlfriend. It was like, it was back and forth. It was me or you. Yeah. And then you were like, yeah, pull up. So I was like, fuck it, pulled up. Um, got to your crib. And then that was like the first time we really met. Yeah, started talking. And you were like, all right, well, let's get some B-roll in. And then we started shooting outside and shit. We shot outside, like in front of the motorcycle at first, and then we went inside yeah. the house and we shot with like those blue lights. Yeah. I'll show it I'll show it on screen and shit. And yeah. then <laughs> So like I had my big ass backpack on and a stabilizer. <laughs> this man pulled up on his bike, so he just gave me a helmet. And so I just hopped on the back, holding my fucking stabilizer in one hand. Yeah. Just like driving to like different places to go shoot. Yeah. And that's when yeah. Going. Yeah, you were, yeah, we were like, where can we shoot at? Like, we need someone with good lighting. And so we went to fucking Stripes or the checkout mm-hmm. on fucking, where like, as soon as you get into Portland. And we just started shooting over there in the parking lot. I remember a fucking firefighter came up to you. <laughs> and he was like, hey, I seen you shooting uh, around here. I have a business. I, I own a fucking gym. And can I get your information? Blah, blah, blah. And, I didn't know uh, how to handle it. I was just kind of like, uh... yeah, check me out on YouTube. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, yeah, but it was kind of it was like for that first. That was my first time really like doing an actual <laughs> fucking video. It was like it was weird for everybody to be staring at me, but you were just like helping me out, and you were like just just pretend like they're not there. Just just lock into the video and let's get these shots in. We're gonna take like a couple B rolls and shit. Yeah. And so yeah, we walked around the fucking checkout recording and then well we went to the fucking we went to the hotel right yeah we went to the hotel and recorded there yeah i remember we walked we, as soon as we walked in fucking was it as soon as we walked in we saw that dude with the cigarette or was it after we talked think, to the no nah, i think it was after we shot a little bit and then we came back outside yeah so like so like we walked in and then we, we asked the fucking the lady. the lady that was in the front we were like, is it cool if we record here? And they were like, nah, it's not. And then you were like, it's for a video. Like, we're shooting a quick video real quick. And she was like, okay, it's fine. Just don't get any uh, guests on the camera because yeah. they they didn't sign up for any of that. And so you're like, yeah, we're, we're going to be real quick. So well, we walked through, like, the hallways. And then we went to, like, the second floor and shit. And, um, yeah, just started shooting. Went outside to the pool and shit. Shot out there. And then fucking smoked that cigarette. <laughs> and yeah. And then I think, what was that? Was that it? We went somewhere else, right? Uh, I think that was it. And then we just came back. But we were talking a lot. Like, that was when we really, like, we first, we clicked that night. Like, yeah. we were just talking about life and shit. Life, death, and a lot of shit. We just started clicking. And from there, like... You were a whole different kind of person. Like, you're different than I expected. I, I thought you were gonna be like more of a typical like gangster kind of guy with like you know you know like the like the clout motherfuckers. You know? Yeah. But like you you're actually cool. Yeah. And that nah. just tells me a lot, like you don't know until you know the yeah. person. No, a lot of people a lot of people give me that, they'll be like, I thought you were gonna be more of like a like a fucking a fuck boy, like a fucking, like egotistical, yeah, like egotistical. you know what I'm saying. Yeah. But and then they like really talk to me, and it's just like, yeah, I'm really just chilling. Just like we shot uh, in the pool. Yeah. For pain. Um. So we need to get some shooting. So we need to finish that bitch. Real talk. The GoPro footage looked fucking live. Ass or tits. Ass or tits. Shit. Honestly, ass. Honestly, ass, like, t- I don't know. If they got both, it's a blessing. If it's ass, I'm going with the ass. I need something I can play with. Tits, it's like, it's only so much. If you don't got nothing to smack, like when you out in public, it's like, fuck it. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can't be at H-E-B playing with titties, but you could be at H-E-B playing with some ass. 
True, or, true. Or whatever the case is, but I'm going with ass. Where do you see yourself in five years? Like, if I just keep working the same way that I am and 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 do what I gotta do, do my part. Um, hopefully, just like put my foot into the door of of going to the industry and actually like going to the next level besides being local. Yeah. Like going to Houston and performing and going to San Antonio, other cities in, in Texas yeah. and performing and, and getting my name out there in another way besides. Same thing with me, I'm trying to leave, I'm trying to get more out there. Yeah. yeah. What else can the media expect from you? A lot of shirts, a lot of fucking hoodies, a lot of different clothing, merchandise, a website, um, a lot of better songs than what I've ever re released because every time I'm in the studio, it just like, it gradually gets better and better and, and I'm getting more used to my voice and what my sound is. So um, a lot of great songs, a lot of merchandise and a website and just doing some different things. I'm trying to switch it up and not just be like the same for the next couple of years and just dropping music on SoundCloud. I'm trying to be on all platforms and yeah. just be out there and, and get out there in the community and letting middle schools and high schools and and people that are in the streets know who I am, shit like that. What are your struggles? Like, what do you struggle with? Um, shit. I struggle with like showing emotion and like just being, I think every every man, every every boy, every every person who's a male goes through a, a not being able to show their emotions the way they want to because they're just grown up in, in a specific kind of way. Yeah, in a way where it's like, if you cry or if you do anything, it's just like, stop crying, you're a man. Like, wipe that shit off, you know what I'm saying? Like keep going like I don't nobody give a fuck so but like if you're a girl it's like if you're crying everybody's gonna come up to me like what's wrong what's wrong with you like are you okay and when you're a boy a man you grow up and you're just like I right, fuck it I'm not gonna explain my feelings because nobody really gives a fuck um other than that probably just like getting closer to my family as much as I love my family it's like I'm an introvert when it comes to them. But when it comes to like friends and, and shit like that, I'm more close with friends than I am with family. And it's really like growing up, it was like I wasn't really around family. I was always out. I was always with like my football team. I was always with like my closest friends and just outside, like as a little kid, outside playing, fucking in the streets until the street light came on or fucking coming middle school, high school, was like always just at football practice. and. Just being more close with friends and family. So like, definitely just getting close with them because I feel like when I'm around them, it's kind of awkward in a way. And they expect for it not to be, but for me, it's like, it's awkward. I feel like I can't say much. I feel like I can't do much, shit like that. What do you think happens when you die? Shit. I don't know. There's like, there's so many conspiracies that like I've listened to. And, but what I've been taught was that there's a heaven, there's a hell, and doing right and repenting from your sins is gonna get you to heaven. But it's kind of one of those things that you just gotta find out. I'm not, like, there's no guessing to it. There's no, like, this is what happens when you die. Like, there's none of that. It's really just like, you're gonna find out. Like, that's like asking, what do you think happened before you were born? I didn't know, but I was born and it's just like, I'm here. So it's like, we're dying, it's like, People say you can get reincarnated. People say there's a heaven. People say you're just a spirit. But then it's like, how do you explain ghosts? And then it's like, like, I don't know. Like, there's a different dimension, shit like that. It's like, there's so much shit. So it's like, honestly, like, thinking about death, it gives me anxiety, bro. I already used to. I mean, now it's like, I just be chilling. But like, when I used to think about it, it just like, it make me feel some type of way. Like, I'd, I'd my whole day would shift from like being great to that shit would slip across my mind and I'd be like, fuck, like my, like fuck, like life. Like wake up and do things and be like a life. Like, I don't know, but it's kind of a hard question. It's kind of like, it's kind of like a rhetorical question. Like, I can't even really answer that till it happens, but. You don't know. Yeah, you don't know. I mean, nobody knows. Anything uh, happening with overtime? 
Um, I was with Juggernaut for probably like a couple of weeks, and Opti and Monty were just so open to just having me come to the studio. Went to Bayside and um, we recorded three three a.m. somewhere. I recorded that with uh, Opti, and uh, me and Monty got I think a couple tracks in. And we were just chilling at the studio. You actually came by in that studio session and started taking pictures and shit. Um, but slowly, Opti went to the valley and Monty uh, stopped recording for a little bit. And so kind of juggernaut just like split it ways and shit. Um, and then I met fucking Jay from Overtime. And um, fucking great, great dude. Showed nothing but love. Like come over like family, watch the fights, like watch football, like fucking go out to eat at Fridays. Like his wife was like welcoming, his fucking daughter was welcoming. Like they were all just a welcoming family. And um, met YB, met Doozy, met Wise, met um, School Steve, like a lot of people. Um, because of overtime. Yeah, because of overtime. And they gave me like a lot of good sessions that we just got to talk and vibe and chill. And um, it was great to be in a group that like everybody was focused on music and shit, but uh, it was another thing where just slowly we just drifted apart, just went our own ways and shit, so. But yeah, shout out to them though. Like they really helped for a good amount of time and, and showed me a lot of love. The feeling was mutual. And show love to my nigga Addy. He really be working hard as fuck. And you know what I'm saying? It's no off days with us, it's every day. It's, it's we doing what we do, man. And, and it's gonna stay that way. Until fucking death, till death do us part, we gonna keep doing what we was born on this motherfucking earth to do. And that's just to keep creating and keep showing people what the fuck goes on in our minds and bring it to your fucking platform of, of, of your phone, of your, of your uh, laptop screen, your fucking TV, all that shit. You gonna really see what, what the fuck goes on in, in, in these noggins right here. You know what I'm saying? Lyrical wise, fucking visual wise, all that shit. Show your mom, show your cousin, show your dog, show your neighbor, you know what I'm saying? Show your teacher, show show everybody, you know what I'm saying? I'm just like you, me and you the same people. Go through the same shit, same struggle. You know, we all really got the same lives, but we just kind of in our own worlds with it, you know what I'm saying? So, like, if you my fan, if, if, you, if you're younger, if you're older, reach out to me if you need somebody, you know what I'm saying? I know everybody feels alone in their own world, but if I'm gonna text away when it comes to that, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I know what it feels like. So I'm always gonna be here for my people and just keep helping, keep supporting and, and show some love and I'll do the same back to y'all. Fuck, fuck by nobody but myself. What are you talking about? You're not living for nobody. Why the fuck I'm a, why the fuck I'm gonna make you happy if I'm not happy and keep living like that? Fuck, the fuck? Like, bitch, I got things I gotta do. Like, and you really holding me back. Fuck all that. What's your creative process like? Shit. A lot of people write. I'm the type to punch in and freestyle. And for those of y'all who don't make music, punching in is I'm sp I'm spinning something up. Nah, 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 nah. And I'm less like, I right, keep that. Punch me in after that. And so that plays and, and he's recording and I'm saying, nah, 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 nah. And I'm like, nah, I delete that. Punch me back in. And so they start recording before what I just said and I punch in and I nah, 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 keep that and so it's kind of a hard process when I book studio sessions I kind of waste time just punching in and and that's why a lot of people write because they don't like wasting their time but me I'm, I'm a dumbass so I just be punching in making shit kind of listen to a beat if I'm feeling the beat and I feel a certain emotion listening to it I kind of just base the whole the whole session off of this beat sounds like like I'm going through a, a fucking breakup. So I'm gonna start rapping like I'm going through a breakup. This beat sounds like I should explain my life. So I'm gonna explain my life. So shit like that and just punch in. Kinda kinda lose myself punching in. I think I should start writing it. That's something I gotta work on actually because going to El Dusty's, I paid for a three hour session. It was 150, 50 flat every hour. And they were like, we don't mind taking your money, but you have a good voice, you have good music and we see what you're trying to get at. And we'll keep taking your money, but if you come prepared and you have shit written and you have the beats you want already selected and we're not listening to them for fucking 30 minutes to an hour, then you would get a lot more done. 
it's kind of like common sense, but like really like me being the punching artist, it's like when you go to the studio and like uh, make your music, yeah, your, your creative process is like how you're feeling at the moment. Exactly. That beat that you choose in the moment. Exactly, because I listened to a beat three weeks ago and and not be feeling that type of way no more. Mm -hmm. So it's all just like in the moment, boom, like let's listen to beats, let's find a beat and let me punch in. But yeah. sometimes that could be bad because it could waste an it hour. Waste a lot of time. Yeah, so that's why, I, like my, my bro Batman, he just be writing all of his shit and it really helps. Who would you most like to collaborate with? I'd say Autumn. Autumn is like a big influence to me. And Autumn. like, yeah, he's, a, he's an underground SoundCloud rapper, but he's really blowing up mainstream. Um, I just like a different sound. Like, I don't like the same sound that's on the radio. That shit's played out. Yeah. So I would like to collab with, like, somebody with a different sound but a good fan base. And, um, yeah. If you could go open a show for any artist, who would it be? Somebody who gets the crowd lit so I can have a lit-ass crowd, like Travis Scott, Kanye, Kanye fucking West. That'd be fucking crazy. You seen that, right? He just played one note and the yeah, crowd went and, fucking crazy. Yeah. That's that shit. <laughs> fucking crazy. Have you seen the have you seen the videos for Donda? Like at the fucking it, I forgot what he called it, but like there's a whole football stadium that's every seat is packed. And like Imagine. Crazy. 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 What is one message you would give to your fans? Uh just be you. Just just keep being you no matter what you do. Like whether it's working at fucking McDonald's or whether it's painting or making music or playing sports, just be you. Just just be the best you you can be at if anything. Keep keep setting a, a higher goal than what you did the last time. Whether it's oh I'm playing basketball and, and I, I scored fifty points, but next game I'm gonna score seventy. You know, and and whether it's um, helping out like the community or something like oh I fed. Five homeless people, but I'm gonna feed twenty or thirty, or whatever the case is. But just being the best you you could be, and I think everybody gives out that advice. But it's it definitely contributes to everything. Like anything you do, you you got to be the best you can be, and and just keep be be your own self. Be yourself, but be your own competition. Look in the mirror, and, and that's your competition. It's it's not the person who's getting more views than you. It's not the person who's who you think sounds better than you is yourself. You know what I'm saying? You can't compete with nobody but yourself. What is the most useless talent you have? Shit. I'm good at writing essays and shit. That's pretty useless. For college, it might be good. <laughs> it really don't apply with music. I really can't write for shit. But when it comes to like writing a hook with like a thesis and like all that shit, I could, I'm on that shit. <laughs> I'm on that shit. What the fuck did you just do? No, 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 that's good. But no, yeah, like ELA was my favorite class, like over geometry, algebra, whatever the fuck, science, fucking whatever the fuck. ELA was my shit. I love that shit. Like poems and shit, haikus and shit, like learning the rhyme schemes. I can't do fucking poems and shit. Bro, that's that shit. Like, once, I you, wish. once you learn it, it's cage, but like it's kind of beautiful in a way. Do you sing in the shower? And what songs? Shit. To be honest, I used to, like, on some, like, on some, I play music and sing, but, like, it'd be my playlist. Yeah. Sometimes I'd be on some, like, Chris Brown shit, not gonna lie to you. Like, I used to play, like, fucking drunk texting and fucking, uh, just a lot of Chris Brown, a lot of R&B in the shower. But, like, when I'm driving and shit, it's just, it'd be switching up from, like, Young Boy to, like, fucking Adele. Bryce and Tiller. Sometimes they're hard if I'm feeling it like that. What would you be doing right now if it wasn't for your music career? Whew. Shit. That's because I ain't even shit. But like, you ain't shit. I ain't, no, I'm, I, I ain't shit. Like, with music, anybody that's local really ain't shit. But probably, I'm not going to lie because I'm doing it right now, but like selling, like trapping, selling, selling drugs, just doing drops, probably fucking college. But I don't mind going to college. That shit seems lit. But probably just living like a basic ass life. And that shit's honestly boring as fuck. Like working nine to five and then going home and shit. Probably going, going to the gym. TV all night. 
Yeah. Crazy. That shit's so lame, bro. Like, no offense to anybody who does that shit, but, like... It is, though. They, they probably would fucking admit to it, but... Yeah, that's not... Shit, like, what else are we gonna fucking do? Yeah. Make music, I guess. Like, fucking party, like, what the fuck? Yeah, party. <laughs> like, I don't... Fucking... I don't fuck with parties. Work. All yeah. the weekdays. Just party and all that shit. Like... I don't know. I'm not that kind of person, either. Yeah. Like, I, it used to be fun. It used to be hella fun, but... It used kinda to when just, I was, like, 12. Yeah, it kind of just grow out of that shit, like... This shit's useless. I'm not doing no more from this. Where have you performed? What are your favorite and least favorite venues? But you know what's crazy? I actually never perform. Like really, I've had the opportunity in front of me several times, but just never actually wanted to. I actually get like a little bit of stage fright, mm-hmm. thinking about the shit. And um, yeah, like I've never performed. I always wanted to, and like I actually plan on doing it. I, like I plan on doing it more in the future, but I just haven't really been on that yet. I think I really want to grow my fan base before I even start performing, mm-hmm. just because I'd rather not perform and everybody's and just like... nobody's in there, like... Yeah, or if, like, somebody's there, they're like, who the fuck is this? Mm-hmm. And, like, you know what I'm saying? And, like, I'm nervous, and then they're just like, he just did bad as fuck, and we just laughed at him. Shit like that. <laughs> Do you have any upcoming shows? I don't, bro. I was supposed to go on a, on a tour with Overtime, but... Some shit had happened with the event coordinator to where it got put it got pushed back or it got canceled or some shit. So it was supposed to happen, but it didn't. How do you feel the internet has impacted the music business? Tremendously. Like A I lot. Sh- I sh- yeah, my, me personally I share my music on fucking Snapchat. Mm-hmm. But lately there's been a bunch of TikTok people have been dropping songs and get signed into labels in like a week or two just off of one little clip they posted yeah. like fucking hundreds of people thousands of people record to their song and they're like you should you should uh, make a song to that or you should blah 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 and a, and a fucking a label would see it and they'll sign them like straight off rip like off that one song so the internet and social media has really like changed the whole everything from like back in the day like you have to actually like Go to places. If we were born in the 80s or the 70s or some shit, and we were like rapping, and it was the 80s or 90s, people would go out and sell their mixtapes on CDs at fucking like public stores and shit. That shit is crazy. Like, but to just have like a click of a button, everybody gets to see your shit. That's like, that shit's crazy. So much more convenient for everybody to stop by and Fuck your yeah. shit. Fuck yeah. Yeah, back in the day, you'd have to fucking actually like pay people to be in the studio and actually yeah. pay people to like. Get it on the radio. Exactly. I think that's what everybody was like trying to do is get on the radio. Exactly. That's how it was back then. You went to jail? No, I haven't. Mm-hmm. I'm a good young man. What's the best advice you've been given? Um, to not try to sound like somebody, not to try to mimic somebody. somebody yeah, like use it as as a use it as motivation, but don't try to sound like nobody. Don't try like. If my favorite artist was fucking, let's say, Lil Yachty, I don't want to make songs that sound exactly like Lil Yachty because they already have enough of that. Everybody's trying to sound like somebody. Everybody's trying to sound like Lil Yachty or Travis Scott or an underground rapper. So you got to be in your own category to separate yourself from everybody else and get outside the box and not try to mimic or or recreate something that's already been out there because it's already done. Like It's already out there. Mm. Shit, go get vaccinated. No, don't get vaccinated. Go get vaccinated. Don't get vaccinated. Don't listen to this man. Go get vaccinated. No, 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 no. Trust me, don't get vaccinated. Don't. Okay. Don't. Okay, don't. Don't trust the government, bro. Come on. I actually might have COVID right now. I don't care. But, um, nah, um, love your family. Hug on your family. You never know when it could be their last day. You might regret some shit. Love on your brothers, your people. You know, a lot of people in this city are dying like on a weekly basis, daily, damn near daily basis. So always check up on your people, make sure they're straight. Um, stay out the way, you know, and get that money, get that bag. And <coughs> 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 yeah, rich forever, nigga.
Yeah. <laughs> 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 you can cut that shit. You can probably cut that off.